Okay, so essentially speaking, 3.1 is a stress level 1 problem, although we do have these slightly odd terms and slightly odd um, diagram compared to before. So with stress level 1, you would look at your beam, be supported on two, two supports, uh, apply a load, you look for the bending moment, and then you're going to look for the radius of curvature. Here we've thrown in this uh, anticlastic curvature term. And the other thing is that we've got a cantilever, so it's a bit different in that sense. And also um, we are uh, implying that there's some kind of turning moment here. Whether that's caused by the mass of the beam, I don't know. I've got Poisson's ratio, so that's going to be used for something or other. So what do we do when we're stuck? Well, starting point for a, a T-beam will be to work out where the centroid is. So I am going to call bottom bit will be my uh, bottom section and then top section. Uh, to work out centroids, I will do Y bar or neutral axis, which is sum of areas for their particular sections divided by uh, their particular centroids divided by the sum of areas for area one. Got dimensions 30 by 40. So area one is going to be 100, 1,200. Area 2, here we've got 9, whoops, here we've got 90 by 20. So that works out to be 1,800. Area 1, 1200 multiplied by its centroid, which will be here, so that will be 20. Area 2, 1800 multiplied by its centroid. So we've got 40 millimeters plus 10, so that will be 50. So the Y bar is going to be 12, zero, zero, times 20, plus 18, zero, zero, times 50, divided by 1, 2, zero, zero, plus 1, 6, zero, zero. And get a nice number, 38 millimeters, and that's obviously coming from the base. Right, so that takes us into the, the T bar section as we'd expect, the upper bar section. What does it? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It, uh, we're still below, just t a tad below. It's 40 meter, millimeters long, the bottom section. Okay, so we found the Y bar. Why are we finding the Y bar? So we can find I. So sum of. B, D to the power of 3 sections divided by 12 plus A, H squared. Right. So we've got uh, 12. Lower section is 30 times by 40 to the power of 3 plus its area 30 times 40. Okay, and now what about H? Well, this is 20. So, so I've got H is going to be 38, take away 20, so that's 18. That's my first bit. Now for the second bit, uh, 12. 
its width is 90, its depth is 20 to the power 3, its area is 90 times 20, and what's its h? So to get there was 50, to get to this centroid here is 50, take away 38 and that will give me the h value. So 50, take away 38, gives me 12 squared. So let's work out what i is in term uh, using millimeters to the power of 4. So 8, 6, 8 times 10 to the 3, and that's millimetres to the power 4. Okay, dokey. so everything's good so far. Um, right, so what have, I got? what have I got? So now I've got Y bar, the last thing you can do is a sort of preamble that we're always probably going to want to do to structural problems is we can look for y bot and y tot so y bot will equal the neutral axis so that's 38 millimeters and y tot will be 40 plus 20 so 40 plus 20, take away 38. So that's 22 millimeters. So have I got everything now that I want? I think so. I've got my M, uh, I've got my I, I've got my Ys. Um, yeah, I'm happy, I think. So the first bit he wants me to do is to find tensile and compressive stresses. So let's rearrange the engineer's bending equation. So stress is going to be uh, m y over i. So let's take a look at this. Um, the arrow is kind of turning like this. So we've got a bending moment kind of going anti-clockwise um, so the, the tensile stress is therefore we're expecting, expecting our, our beam to be curving downwards yeah so that means the tensile one is going to be on top. The top is being stretched. So tensile is on top. The M is 3000. Y is 22 times 10 to the minus 3. And the I is 868 eight times 10 to the minus 9. So take off 12 to make that minus 9 so I'm in I'm in SI units whoops 3000 times 22 minus 3 868 so that's 76 megapascals And that's a positive, that's a tension. And then for the bottom, which is going to be in compression, so we, you want to use the bottom distance, so same turning moment, 3000, that's 38 times 10 to the minus 3, 
0.868 times 10 to the minus 9. Put those numbers in your calculator and uh, you're going to get minus 131.3 megapascals. Okay, so that's done the compressive and the tensile stresses. Now let's think uh, about the radius of curvature. So we're looking at, at your, your beam here and it's getting curved like this because we're trying to do a turning moment at the end like that. So the radius here, the radius of curvature, <coughs> we can go back to the engineer's bending equation. And I suppose the closest thing to the raw data is going to be uh, using the M and the I. So R equals, bring this up, E. So I'm going to bring this up this side, I over M. Okay, I think that's fine. So, sticking your numbers, uh, what have we got for E? 190. The I was 8, 6, 8 times 10 to the minus 9. Make sure it's in SI units. So my final answer will be in meters and my M was 3000. Yeah. Oh dear, watch out. Got that wrong. No, 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 I've got that right. 3000. Yeah. Thought I hadn't applied my K, I have. So that's fine. So, oh god, yeah, it's a big, big number, 54.97 meters, so therefore, let's say 55 amongst friends. So, trying to fit a curve around this, you're going to have to go way away, away from, from the beam to try and fit a curve, a circle around that deflection. For the last part, the anticlastic curvature, well, what you've got to do, imagine, is look at the beam from uh, from the side. Yeah, so look at, we're looking at the cross section. So we're going to be pulling the beam around, which means we're this top bit is getting stretched as I'm sort of going off in this direction. This is going to get compressed. So what's going to what's going to happen? is that side forces due to the, the elasticity of the material is going to cause this uh, the Poisson's ratio is going to cause this to um, be pulled in and it's going to cause this to go out so if we uh, looked at a particular original section uh, we're going to have the effect that uh, the top bit kind of gets pulled in a bit and the bottom bit kind of gets stretched out a bit. How much would that happen by? Well, uh, obviously it will happen kind of less than me actually stretching it in the direction where I'm applying my load. Uh, so the radius of curvature I'm expecting to be larger. Surprise, surprise, how am I going to find it? I simply take my other radius of curvature and I call this the, so this is the anticlastic curvature which is your 
radius of curvature for your neutral axis and divide it by Poisson's ratio. So divide by 0.3. So that's going to be 183 meters. Okay, that's 3.1 done.